Right now on To The Point, dozens of unfinished projects and subcontractors without paychecks for months. And it's a direct loss because we had to cover the material as well as my labor. Tonight, what people are demanding from a company that builds tiny homes and how the company is responding. Plus, a California lawmaker calls for an investigation of Sequest after ABC 10 reported on accusations of animal neglect. Cloudy skies and thunderstorm chances return where we may see an increased risk for fire outbreaks. And later on the back roads, how the town of Likely is holding on to the idea of small town America. Our town <laughs> motto is where the hell's likely. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on To The Point. I'm Becca Habiger. Alex Bell has the night off. New tonight, a California assembly member is now calling for an investigation of Sequest Aquarium and Zoo in Folsom. This comes after an ABC 10 investigation by our Andy Judson. She joins us now with more details. Yeah, Becca, California Assembly member Josh Hoover, who represents the Folsom area, sent a letter to the state's Department of Fish and Wildlife in response to our investigation into Sequest. Citing our reporting, Assembly member Hoover reminded California's Department of Fish and Wildlife of their critical role in protecting animals and asked them to investigate Sequest. Now, 20 employees have come forward to ABC 10 with concerns about animal neglect at Sequest. The assembly member outlined several allegations they brought forward in our story. Here are some of their concerns. We're not supposed to tell anyone that anything died. If something is deceased in a tank, pretend it's alive. Um, and then we'll just go get a new one kind of thing. 90% of the time, they weren't getting fed because there was not enough time or enough staff to do it. Because they wouldn't bother with quarantining them, you would then infest an entire tank. But then children and parents are sticking their hands in that tank and then they're taking their contaminated hand to another tank, and the next thing you know, the whole aquarium has parasites. Today, I spoke with former Sequest employees about the letter, and they say this is a good first step, but they're also critical of California's Department of Fish and Wildlife. The agency has conducted many inspections since it opened, since Sequest opened in 2018, including one last October, but they say they found no issues. It's important to note that the Department of Fish and Wildlife has permits for around 26 animals at Sequest, but sources estimate Sequest has over 100 animals. They say more oversight is needed. And many of the animals there, like fish and reptiles, have no regulation from any agency, according to former employees we spoke to. And Becca, as a federal agency, the U.S. Department of Agriculture is also in charge of regulating Sequest. The assembly member included that the USDA in the email, but right now is only asking the California Department of Fish and Wildlife to investigate so far. But of course, we'll keep you updated. Yeah, Andy, thank you so much. And of course, this story has sparked a lot of reaction from people over the last few days. In fact, there is a protest planned at the Palladio Mall this Saturday. We'll keep you updated as we learn more about this story. And to see Andy's full investigation into Sequest, check out ABC 10 Plus on your Amazon Fire or Roku device. Just look for the title on our home screen. You can also find every episode at ABC 10.com. Now to a story we first brought you here on ABC 10. A homeowner calling out a Fair Oaks based company for failing to finish building an ADU in her backyard after she paid more than $100,000 for it. Since that story aired, dozens of you have reached out to ABC 10's Jeannie Nguyen sharing your similar experiences. So she joins us now with an update and why homeowners aren't the only ones hurting in all this. Becca, I got so many calls, emails, texts, and messages that we decided to meet with homeowners, subcontractors, and current employees of Anchored Tiny Homes at a park in Rockland today because there were just too many for me to talk to one-on-one. -on -one. Now tonight, you'll hear from a plumbing company who says the company owes them thousands and a current employee who isn't sure when his next paycheck will come. <laughs> At a park in Rockland, we met with a group of people who all have one thing in common. It is, it's ridiculous. They have spent or are owed thousands of dollars from Anchored Tiny Homes, or ATH. David Welsh and his son Kyle King own and operate David's Plumbing Incorporated. They say they were hired to do plumbing work for two projects by ATH. We actually financed the entire project that we were contracted for, material and labor. And then we were supposed to be paid immediately after. But getting paid immediately never happened. These unpaid invoices show the company owes David Plumbing more than $10,500. It was a huge hit. My dad made sure that I get paid for the work that I do, but 
he's the owner of the company, so if he doesn't get paid, he he takes that as a loss. And it's a direct loss because we had to cover the material as well, as well as my labor. John Weinheimer knows something about not getting paid as he worked quality control for Anchor Tiny Homes. Just this week, we got an email directly that said, we can't pay you next week. We're, so, we're not going to pay you your next check. An employee for the past eight months, Weinheimer says he started to see red flags a few months ago. And I just started hearing things like, hey, they're late in paying, they're late in paying, and they can't pay me, and I'm not going to come do the next job if they can't pay me for the one I did two months ago. Those jobs were at people's homes, people like these homeowners. I'm a homeowner, and I pay Anchor Tiny Home about ninety-five dollars to $100,000. I'm a homeowner and I paid Anchor Tiny Homes $113,000. We're homeowners and we paid Anchor Tiny Homes $29,000. I'm a homeowner and we have paid Anchor Tiny Homes $266,000. On Tuesday, CEO Colton Paulus told us this. We'll do everything in our power to make it right. And I just want to say I'm sorry to everybody affected by this. This was not the intention of anything we set out to do. It was the intention to grow a business and we just got out under our skis a little bit. Paulus has been unresponsive to ABC 10 since Tuesday and on Friday, we tried tracking him down at the office in Fair Oaks, but no one was there, only a dark office with the company's core values, including integrity and accountability. And Jeannie, earlier this week, you reached out to the Sacramento County District Attorney's Office to ask if they're investigating. What have you learned? Well, Becca, hopefully we'll get an answer from the DA's office by next week. But what I can say is that when we were at Anchor Tiny's Home's office in Fair Oaks, there was a letter addressed to the founder from Pino & Associates, a law firm based in Roseville. I have called the law firm to ask what that's about, but I have yet to hear back. Jeannie, thank you. Tonight, fire crews continue to battle the Park Fire in Butte, Plumas, Shasta, and Tehama counties. Cal Fire says it's now California's fourth largest wildfire in history. It has burned almost 400,000 acres and is just 24% contained. In Tuolumne and Mariposa counties, crews are making progress on the Pedro Fire. It has burned more than 3,800 acres and is 25% contained. All evacuation orders have been downgraded to warnings. And check this out. Two mountain lions have been sighted in Roseville. A mom and her cub were seen in the area of East Roseville Parkway and Taylor Road this week. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife is now installing cameras in the area to see if they can spot the mountain lion themselves. In the meantime, the city of Roseville is asking people not to be alone on the trails at night. Now to the race for the White House. Vice President Kamala Harris has enough Democratic National Convention delegates to earn the party's nomination. The party's chairman says she secured those magic 1,975 votes from convention delegates in a virtual roll call. And Harris marked the moment with a virtual announcement. As your future president, I know we are up to this fight. And when we fight, everyone will say in unison, we win. Sources tell ABC News the search for Harris's VP pick is entering its final phase. She's expected to announce her running mate by Tuesday. Meanwhile, new 538 polling numbers show Harris and former President Donald Trump are in a razor thin race. Harris with 45% support compared to Trump's 43.5%. As the race narrows, Trump and his running mate, J.D. Vance, are preparing to spend the weekend on the campaign trail with a rally Saturday in Georgia. Coming up on To The Point, three Americans back home after being detained in Russia. Hear what they're saying about their return, plus what comes next for others behind bars overseas. Warm and muggy conditions through tonight, but temperatures tomorrow around 102. How long these triple digits could last. And later on the back roads, we head to the outer limits of the state to see where small town America is still holding on.
ABC 10 meteorologist Carly Gomez joins us. Carly, did I see a little bit of rain on my windshield this afternoon? <laughs> you did. A little <laughs> sprinkle happening on windshields even tonight. And we've been tracking this uh, storm system, really, that came in off of Mexico, a low pressure system into Southern California, but bringing in a line of showers right now from Truckee to South Lake Tahoe, approaching areas of Placerville soon, but just past Arnold and all the way down through portions of the Tracy Triangle into Stockton soon. Now, what we can expect with this is it's going to be pretty quick to move through, but we're looking at sprinkles across the area. Some people are reporting rain in their backyards. So if you have any of that happening, send it our way. We love to see it. But as you take a look here, we did get some thunderstorms pushing through the Sierra and that did create some areas of hail as well as a early detection rotation. So not necessarily a tornado, but we are seeing the components starting to come together for some of the winds pulling together up high in the Sierra, but we do have another chance to potentially see that again tomorrow. Not quite as great of a chance, but a less chance, but we'll still see some chances. Now moving into Saturday, this is mostly the high Sierra spots. Once again, as that moves into our area and into Nevada, we have that potential to see some kind of activity, and that means lightning strikes could lead to that potential for fire outbreaks or fire risk. So please be careful when thunder roars, go indoors is what they say. Around 4 a.m. Saturday, you're looking at most of the clouds to the north and maybe a few little scattered sprinkles here and there. Otherwise, mostly sunny skies throughout the day. By lunchtime, we do see a quick chance for Sierra thunderstorm there pushing through. Otherwise, mostly sunny into next week. Most of California, except for our area, in Central California to Northern California, we're seeing some heat risk as well as fire danger. If you do have plans to head up toward Shasta, we're also looking at a red flag warning in place through Saturday night. For those potential fire outbreaks, please be careful out there. And as we look at temperatures into the foothills, near triple digits expected tomorrow. And we'll see that really for about the next few days. Saturday through about Wednesday, triple digit temperatures with 90s and mid 90s the following weekend. Carly, thank you. Next on To The Point, hear from the newly freed Americans about their experiences in Russian prison. Plus, what the latest jobs report is signaling about the U.S. economy and when relief could be on the way. Tonight, three newly freed Americans are back on U.S. soil after a landmark prisoner exchange with Russia. ABC's Perry Russom shows us their first moments home after spending months and years behind bars. Today, as we hear from the freed Americans yeah, it's overwhelming. who spent months and years in Russian prisons, I'm never going back there again. There's a renewed focus on the Americans still detained in Russia. Overnight, Paul Whelan holding a flag for the hostages and wrongful detainees pointing to the tick marks for each freed prisoner. Those last three, that's us. Whelan saying, those last three, that's us. The other Americans looking to add their marks to that flag include a teacher named Mark Fogel. In 2021, Fogel was detained at an airport in Moscow after marijuana was found in his bag. His family says he was prescribed the drug to manage a severe decades-long spinal disease. He was sentenced to 14 years in prison. President Biden was asked about him today. We're not giving up. We're not giving up on that. In a statement, Fogel's family says they are completely heartbroken and outraged that he was left behind in yesterday's deal. I am personally working on that case, and I'm going to do everything in my power to see Mark get home. Also still in prison, Russian American Ksenia Karolina, arrested in February. The former ballerina is accused of raising money to support the Ukrainian military. Her boyfriend says she made a donation of about $50 to a Ukrainian organization. Her trial starts in a few days. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for the for the hostages. But at the same time, I'm very heartbroken and sad because my Ksenia is not on that list. Tonight, the Department of Justice is suing TikTok, accusing the company of illegally collecting children's data. The complaint filed with the Federal Trade Commission accused the China-based parent company ByteDance of violating a federal law that requires kid-oriented apps and websites to get parental consent before collecting personal information of children under 13. This is yet another legal battle that will determine if or how TikTok will continue to operate in our country.
Turning to your price points now, the latest jobs report shows some employers are slowing how quickly they are hiring. About 114,000 jobs were added to the workforce in July, which is below expectations and below the trend over the past year of 215,000 new jobs per month. Another concern from the report, the unemployment rate ticked up to 4.3 percent, the highest it's been since October. The question really is is one of are we worried about a sharper downturn in the labor market? So and, and the answer is we're watching really carefully for that. The Fed is now likely to cut interest rates to encourage stronger job growth. Chevron announced today it will move its headquarters from Northern California to Houston, Texas. The company says it expects all corporate functions to migrate over the next five years. The company says this will have no impact on their Richmond, California refinery. Well, you never know what you'll see on the back roads. Tonight, John Bartell takes us to the outer limits of the Golden State to see what life is like in small town America, California style. If you ask me, it's a little tough to define what small town America looks like. Because when I drive around, so many small towns have been gobbled up by big cities. But if you drive up Highway 395 into Modoc County, there's a little community holding on to their idea of a small town for dear life. So our, our town <laughs> motto is where the hell's likely. <laughs> if you don't know where the hell likely California is, you're not alone. Yeah, we're in the northeastern corner of California. As a crow flies about 40 miles from Oregon and 40 miles from Nevada. The center of town is the likely general store where you'll often find Jennifer Florinoy selling ice cream to local kids. It looks like you got more on your mouth than, you know, than actually in your stomach there. <laughs> Other than ice cream, the general store is a one-stop shop. It carries the usuals like canned food and cold drinks, but they also sell fencing supplies, auto parts, and a library of books. In the back, there's even free carousel rides for the kids. Downstairs, you'll find a thrift shop of quilts, crochet items, and even a wedding dress for sale. So this is the Likely General Store. If we don't have it, you don't need it. <laughs> Likely doesn't have a public swimming pool, but they do have several cattle watering troughs for the country kids to cool off in. Do you think that the cows like it when you're swimming around in their water? I'm yeah. not sure. I think they no. think it's disturbing a little bit. Yeah, they, they kind of look thirsty. Cows are a pretty common sight in Likely, and so are horses. community. The cows outnumber the people by a lot. Kelly McGarva is a Bay Area transplant who married a fifth generation rancher in Likely. She says the town's always been small, but it's gotten smaller ever since they closed down the school. It was like a historic school. My husband's great grandfather went there when he was a kid. My husband went there. The elementary school closed in 2012 when enrollment in Likely dipped below about a dozen students. A heartbreak for Jimmy Richardson, who attended this school in 1947. Oh, definite, definite loss. Everybody still talks about the loss of the school here. Jimmy's seen the population of Likely drop from several hundred to about 99 people. Along with the town's residents went other businesses, including the Likely Cafe, the saloon, and a number of blue-collar jobs. One building in town that no one wanted to see close was the Likely Church. The old building wasn't in an ideal location, so the community put it on a trailer and moved it down the street. That's history! Jimmy says the town was founded on hard-working, community-oriented people, folks who make decisions together like when there was a dispute on what to name the town. They took a, a vote and said it's likely to become a town and we're having so much problems, let's just call it like. The town of Likely is not ready to roll over and die quite yet. In fact, the Likely Place Golf Course opened a few years back. It not only attracts golfers, but foodies looking to taste the grill's famous smash burger. Slide it around here a little bit, smash that one. That's why it's called Smash Burger. Yeah. yeah. 
Small town America may be changing, but if you were to ask me to describe what it looks like, I'd likely describe the town of Likely. It's a friendly town if you're friendly. But uh, anyway, get out of town if you're going to cause problems from the city. With that said, here's hoping you now know where the town of Likely is. I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads! Well, now it's your turn. You got something in your town that would be a great road trip destination? Let John know all about it by texting your idea to 916-321-3310. Stay with us. We're back after this. We want to get to some breaking news. We're just getting into the newsroom. A Sacramento two-year-old is in critical condition, and police now say his mother's boyfriend is under arrest on child abuse charges. Police were called to the home on La Almendra Way just after 3 this morning, where they found the child badly hurt. Detectives from the city's homicide and child abuse units are taking over the investigation. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. And if you have something you think we should be looking into, please send the team an email at to the point at abc10.com. Have a safe weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Hey, it's Alex. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the To The Point team and I love hearing from you and I hope that you'll stay in touch. And don't forget, you can always email me and the team at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send us a text message at 916-321-3310.